welcome back to the Houdini Firmograph series. So growth systems are a pretty big part of Houdini. They look pretty and users can have a lot of fun just setting up different types of systems with varying complexity. So today we're going to be covering just a super basic growth with no actual simulation using a defined starting point and just a set of ops. Let's dive in and start setting it up. So we're going to start by dropping down a test geo. I'll use the head, but feel free to use whatever you want. And I'm just going to subdivide it since our growth will rely on points. So we want to add more detail. And now we're going to set up our driving attribute called dist to measure the distance. So I'm going to start by dropping an add node and check on here to make a point. And then hit enter in the viewport. And you can bring up these crosshairs. And I'm just going to move it up here because this is where we want the growth to start. And don't worry about placing it directly on Geo for this setup. Just hover it somewhere in the general area where you want the growth to originate. So make a point VOP named dist. And after the head and attach the add point to the second input. So to access that point, we're going to make an import point attribute node and set the input node to second input. By default, the attribute is looking for is P, which is actually exactly what we want, but you could change that here if needed. To make sure we're constantly looking at that one point, so drop down a constant and set it to zero and just plug that into the PT num, and then use a distance node comparing that point to the position and bind export that to create our dist attribute. Hop back out and we're going to want to store a value for the furthest distance is to our growth. So to do this, drop an attribute promote node and type dist, change the new class to detail and set the method to maximum. We're going to change the name to dist max and uncheck the original, delete original. Now you can see here that we have the value stored in the detail and we're ready to start our growth. So make a point vop node named growth and dive inside. Start by binding in our dist attribute. And then import detail attribute to get that dist max. And if we add a fit to the dist, plug in the dist max to the source max and hook that up to our color, you'll see that we've got a gradient from the closest point to the furthest. So to make the actual animation, hook up a fit node to the frame and set the range you want the growth to happen. I'm going to do about 80 frames and then just make another fit range from our dist attribute and plug in the frames to the source max. You'll see that we get something, but it's definitely not right. So that's just because we're messing around with the maximum value and the minimum is staying at zero. So after our frame fit, we're going to create two more fits for the min and the max. Now they have the same values, so we're just going to tweak them so that they're always a little bit different. So for the minimum, we're going to start it at minus 0.01. And then for the maximum, we're going to span it from positive 0.01 to 1.01. Now if you hit play, we've got our growth. Since we'll be growing something on, I kind of like the value of one to be what grows. So in our fit here, I'm just going to reverse the destination min and max. And now you can mess with these fit values to make this edge a little less harsh. But an easy way to do this is just hop back up and use an attribute blur set to CD and that'll smooth it out. Now let's create some objects that actually grow. So drop a normal node and set the points. And then a scatter node, which I'm going to crank up a little bit. Make a point bot named pscale, and let's set that up. So just make a vector to float to access our CD channel. And make a multiplier and promote that parameter. Now double click it and name it pscale max. So that way we can set that from the outside of our bop. Now bind export that to pscale and we're good. So in my example, I used a platonic solid. 
set to dodecahedron. Scaled it in the y axis and then rotated it 90 degrees in the x to follow along the z axis. Then I just gave it some normals and packed it. So drop a copy to points and hook that up to the first input, the points to the second. These are way too big, so I'm just going to use the P scale max to size them down. And drop a merge so I can see what it looks like on the original head. And we've got the basic growth. So let's just do a few extra bits of detail. First off, I'm going to drop a blast node before the copy to points and type at P scale equals zero. Then set that to points. This just helps reduce the scene so that we're not still calculating geo that we can't even see. I don't like these growing on parts of the face, so let's fix that as well. Go up to our growth and drop a paint mask node. Hit enter in the viewport and you can actually paint where you don't want points to be. Like here around the eyes. And you can hold control and drag to erase. Now I actually want the values to be reversed, so I'm just going to do a quick point wrangle and type at mask equals 1 minus at mask. All this is doing is reversing the values so that the mask becomes 0 where we don't want the points. So dive into our growth node, bind in the mask attribute, and multiply that at the end to make sure that those don't grow points. You can always come down to the scatter node, check on this density attribute, and type in mask so that the scatter doesn't even put points there. Alright, last thing I want to do is give the actual face geo some growth as well. So make another point fop node named displacement. We'll use a displace along normal node to make sure we're pushing out. Hook up the P and the N attributes, and then make a vector to float to use our color for the amount. And that's obviously way too much, and you can use the scale here to reduce it. But that's not really interesting looking, so I'm just going to drop a turbulent noise. And multiply that by the color. And then just mess around to get something that looks cool. Alright, now the color kind of makes it hard to tell what's actually happening. So I'm just going to drop an attribute delete node to remove the CD value. And now we get some weird bits like this where the face geo sticks through the crystals. So let's fix that. There's a cool node called attribute interpolate that works with the scatter node. So if you drop that after and hook the second input up to our face displacement, we get an error because it's looking for these two attributes here. But if you go into the scatter, output attributes, and check on these first two, we've got them. And you can see that the points are actually displacing with the geo. And there we have it. We've got a nice basic growth system. You've got a ton of control with this and plenty of options to add some variation. So definitely go in and mess around with this, add some noise, give it some variation on the P scale. You can get my scene files for this where I added a secondary growth to turn them off on our site. But see if you can just do that on your own before even looking at my files. Alright, uh, that's it for today. I'll see you next time.